Hey everybody, welcome to Home Recording Made Easy in Mix Tip Tuesday, where every Tuesday I show you a new mixing tip to help you make more professional sounding mixes in your home studio. Before we get to this week's tip, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Make sure you hit that notification bell and also stick around to the end of the video because at the end of the video, I have something I wanna give you absolutely free that's really gonna help you with your mixing training. So be sure to stick around. Okay, everybody. So in this Mix Tip Tuesday episode, we're going to talk about gain staging. This is something I get a lot of questions about. I've done some YouTube videos in the past on it. You can check the archive where I've explained it a couple of different ways. But in this video, I'm going to try to show you a few simple ways that you can gain stage your project because it is super important before you start mixing, before you start putting any plugins on your mix, you want to make sure that you're gain stage. Let me show you what that means. Now, the basic, our goal here is when we're gain staging is what we're really trying to achieve. And there's a few ways we can get there. And I'm going to show that to you is when we put all of our audio into our session, right? We import all the audio, every, all our faders on our individual tracks are starting at zero DB at unity gain. When we hit play back on the space bar, typically the loudest part of the song, which is typically one of the choruses. In this case, it'll be the third chorus of the song where all the instruments are playing at the same time, vocals and everything else. We want to make sure that the accumulative, accumulative effect on our master bus of all that audio is not exceeding about a negative 10, negative 12 dB. Now, that is a guideline. It's a nice conservative level that allows you enough headroom. So when you are starting your mixing process and adding EQs and compressors and saturators and tape machines and all the wonderful plugins that we like to use, we're going to inherently raise the overall volume of that track. So when we're done mixing, we're somewhere around a negative 6 dB. Okay, so we're starting at a negative 10, negative 12. We're going to add about five, four to six dB of gain volume in the mixing process. Okay. And that gives our mastering engineer, whether it's you or somebody else, about five to six dB of headroom where they could bring up the overall volume level to the appropriate final volume level for commercial release or however you're going to release your music. That is a nice safe guideline. And I always tell my students, if you start off at negative 10, negative 12, and your mix at negative six, you're not going to have any problems with clipping or anything like that. Okay. So that's the practice I want to impress upon you today. So what is the first thing I do? First thing I do, import all my audio. Everything's at zero dB. I've done all my routing, as you probably saw in last week's a mix tip episode where all my drums, bass, guitars, everything is being routed to our busing system down here in black, all of our buses, everything's at zero dB and that's going directly to the master output. So the first thing I would tell you to do, especially if someone delivered you the tracks that you did not personally record, 99% of the tracks that I get are recorded to hot, which means that if I hit play on right now, which we'll do in a second, um, this is going to be hot and it's going to clip. And if you're wearing headphones or if you've got your monitors really loud in your studio, it's going to blow your ears out. So be careful. So what I'm going to tell you right now is take a second, turn down the volume on your speakers or on your headphones. I'm going to hit play and we're going to look and see on our master fader, how hot is this recording? Okay. Let me turn down my headphones a little bit because I already know the answer, but here we go. You ready? Here we go. Turn down your headphones, hit play. <laughs> Okay, so we're, without blowing anybody's ears out, we're already 2 to 3 dB above zero, plus 2 to 3 dB of clipping, digital clipping. You can see the little red light here, okay? So we're going to click that and reset it. So now you say, well, we're clipping about 3 dB. So if I want to be in a negative 10, negative 12, we're about 13 to 15 dB louder than what we should be on our master fader, right? Okay, so how do we fix that, Dave? What do we do? There's a few ways to do it. First thing you can do, easiest thing to do, simplest thing to do, is just come over here to all your tracks, highlight the first one, highlight the last one, take them all, turn them down. <laughs> you know, say 10 dB, 9, 8, 10 dB. The goal here is you don't want this fader to be all the way down here when you start your mix because then you don't have enough resolution or enough throw, as some people would say, to do your fine tune adjustments as you're going through your mix. So you don't want your faders way the hell down here to achieve that negative 10, negative 12. You don't need to have it at zero, but you want to have it somewhere between negative six and negative 12. You want to give yourself some room. So if we were to lower this, let's say 13.2 dB, now let's hit play. Negative 11, negative 12. 
you can say, okay, if this is a well-recorded track and we don't have any individual tracks that are spiking too hot or way too quiet, which we'll talk about in a second, it could be as simple as that, depending on your track. It could be that easy, right? Okay, so that's one way to do it. Let's bring everything back to zero. Okay, the other thing we can do is you could do the same thing just on the buses if you have a busing system, which we talked about in last week's episode. You could do just take all your buses, leave all your channels at zero, so you have plenty of resolution, plenty of throw, right? You could take all your buses, do the same thing. Let's turn those down. 12, 13 dB, here we go. Negative 10, negative eight, turn it down a couple of more dB. Negative 11. So I've lowered these buses 15 dB, which is a little much. Okay, we're still, we're getting towards the bottom of the channel strip here. So we wanna be careful that we don't get way down in this area. You could do that. That's another thing to do. Again, this is all gonna be dependent upon the audio that you have in your session. Okay, that's two quick and easy ways. Just make sure you're at a negative 10, negative 12 on the master fader. None of your faders are all the way at the bottom that you have nice resolution or throw to make your adjustments while you're mixing. The third way and the more thorough way to do it, and the way I would kind of encourage you to do it, at least in most cases, because things might not be this easy, is you want to look at each individual track. And you wanna make sure that each individual track is either not recorded too hot or too quiet. And make sure that each individual track is somewhere around that negative 12 dB. For example, here's our, let's, uh, let's just solo up our kick drums. We're only listening to one track at a time here. So that kick drum's around a negative six. Let's turn it down. Other kick drum, kick out. That one's around a negative 12. That's not too bad. Let's leave that alone. Snare. Snare is around a negative six, it's too hot. Turn it down a couple of dB. It doesn't have to be a science, just grab the fader, pull it down. Hi-hats, too hot. Tom track, a little hot. Right, you can go through. Way too hot, room mics. Okay, so all our drums have been turned down now because maybe, depending on your audio, turning all the faders down may help the neg get you to the negative 12, negative 10, negative 12, but let's say then some of your tracks are now way too quiet. This is why you go through each, through each individual track, okay? So now if I just were to look at my drums, we're running around on the master fader on a negative 10 with the, with the fader on the bus at zero dB. It's the only thing playing right now, everything else is muted. The master bus is at negative 10. Drums are done. It's that quick. Okay, bass, same thing. Way too hot. Okay, so now as you bring the other instruments in, you gotta watch your master fader. We, our drums were at around neg negative 12. As soon as we added bass, had a cumulative effect, raised it up to about a negative eight. So I'll creep down the buses a couple of dB, okay? And you just kind of do this through all your tracks. If you have something that's recorded way too quiet, or if you have something that's recorded way too hot that even by turning down the fader, it's still way too loud, then bring up your fader and use your clip gain. Let's say it was the bass track, for example and we'll use that as, in, in, as an example. Let's say our bass track came into us and it was just way too hot, it was like this. And even with the fader, it's, it, even with the fader turned down, and let me mute our drums here, just listen to our bass. We're already clipping. So if this is the way it came in, and you say, well, I don't wanna turn it way down here because then I don't have enough resolution, I don't have enough throw in that fader, I wanna keep it up here, but it's still clipping, what do I do? Two things you can do. In Studio One, you can come right up here to your input and turn down your clip gain, turn down your trim pod, okay? Other DAWs will have something similar. Or every DAW will allow you to click on the event or the region if you're in Pro Tools, take this little handle and just turn it down. This is, in, this is a gain, see the gain difference? Turn it down. So when your fader's at zero or just below zero, you know, you can do it this way. 
right? You can turn it down and you'll see the output be affected. Okay, so those are three different ways to kind of gain stage. You can either turn down all the faders collectively, you could turn down just the buses, or you go into your individual tracks, which is my more recommended way to do it. This particular session, things are recorded pretty even, pretty consistent. A lot of sessions are not like this, and you need to go into each individual track, and you need to tweak each individual track. But in the end, the accumulative effect of all of your tracks playing back at the loudest part of the song, which is typically one of your choruses, you want the master fader to be around a negative 10, negative 12, and in that, all your individual tracks, nothing should be clipping, nothing should be too quiet. And this is before you put any plugins on, before you do anything, as far as mixing goes, you wanna gain stage the project, and that will help you when you get to the end of the mix, where you should be around a negative six dB, so nothing's clipping, and you don't have any problems after you put all that hard work in. So I hope you found this week's mix tip video helpful. Now, as I said, I'm gonna give you a free gift here at the end of the video. Thanks for sticking around. I want you to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and get five free training courses right on the home page is worth about 210 bucks you get five free mixing training courses at homerecordingmadeeasy.com where you can start to take these mix tip tuesday little tips and, and actually add them to the to the to the free courses and actually use them in real world applications okay so go to home recording made easy get your five free courses and if you want to even dive deeper into the craft of mixing check out mixingmadeeasy.net perfect for beginners and intermediate level mixers it's great we dive down deep into every month we mix a different song together go to mixingmadeeasy.net it's less than a cup of coffee a day the membership and you get an enormous amount of training so I hope you enjoy that. Leave comments below and let me know if this video was helpful to you and what are some of your gain staging practices that might be outside of what I told you in this video. And also make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in next week's Mixed Tip Tuesday episode. Take care.